Welcome to Independent Venue Week. I'm Simone Marie and I'm going to be chatting to some key figureheads in the music industry about independent venues, their journey and their musical career. And uh, I hope you enjoy them. Thank you for all to, who's joining me. Um, I'm Simone Marie and I'm joined by the wonderful, talented Lila Moss. How are you? I'm, I'm good. Thank you for that introduction. I feel like really a valuable human being now. <laughs> <laughs> felt, like a sack of, felt like a sack of shit all year, so this is great, thanks. <laughs> I love your music, and uh, I also love the album you've just put out as well. I've been, I've been playing it on the show. I just... Um, I just yeah, thank you. I, I'm I, a fan I have of noticed. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, how are you, how are you doing? And Like, uh, are you okay, and are you surviving? And yeah, really okay, and at, at, at the times where I feel very uh, frustrated. I do just, you know, re re reaffirm um, my gratitude for the fact that, um, I mean, I, I used to live in London and I would have been in London yeah. and it would have just been so much harder. I, I'm usually in London all the time. So, yeah. um, you know, even if I'm not living there, I'm back and forward. So um, I feel a lot of gratitude that where I am, there's loads of space, not many people. And um, in a way, uh, living here the last few years, I've been sort of practicing a life of lockdown anyway, because <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to make a real effort to uh, actually uh, converse with people on a daily basis as it Your is. people count has been going down. Everybody. Yeah, yeah, suddenly. Um, it's now hit rock bottom. But no, um, oh. no, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying hard to stay full of gratitude because, um, oh. yeah, I've just been given a lot of, a lot of space and uh, not sort of run right into the middle of the maelstrom of it all. So, yeah, so, yeah really expensive. good. I heard yeah. something on... Uh, woman's hour I think it was or, or, or the other day somebody talking about like little lockdown diva moments where you where you are oh. getting really annoyed and like you feel fully entitled to have a total hissy fit <laughs> and I was thinking Honestly, yeah, yeah I've had a few of those but um but they all seem quite ridiculous sort of a few hours later but, you know when you sort of, I don't know maybe you Funny, the news. It? You, you, it's almost like the lack of eh, what's the word the lack of reality is really uh, exacerbating and little things it's sort of um it's very frustrating i think at this point now like this this time well a few months in this time last year when it was kind of kicking off i i, I saw this on one of these social media platforms like i i you know like it comes up you were doing this last year oh, yeah. yeah you don't even want to know or you kind of have you don't want to know where you have a little look and it, everyone was going oh two weeks into lockdown I'm starting to feel a bit miserable now and you're just like <laughs> and the rest mate. <laughs> Who'd have thought? You know, how have you managed to, um, I mean, you, man, you mentioned, you know, having space and being around nature, which kind of must be like. Really oh, yeah. I mean, in the summer, I was practically, um, I was practically wildlife. I was sort of outside more than inside. So that was great. Um, yeah. But but I do have a kid. So I was sort of running, I don't know, I was crawling around with grazed knees and picking up wood lice and stuff like that, which I, it's not cool. I don't think I need to go into that. But yeah, summertime, <laughs> summertime was good. And yeah. Um, but, but I mean, really, uh, my my partner and I we just we just tag team a few hours e each or every other day in um, our home yeah. studio, which is just not very big, but it's a, it's it's a room with stuff in it so that we can um, keep creating, keep writing, revising. And actually, this whole sort of second lockdown, I don't know. I think maybe for me, it's been quite useful because I've once again been faced with the fact that like, okay, it's very unlikely I'm going to get out there and do anything. Certainly with kind of with the last record that came out in August. I mean, I can't, I can't sort yeah. of celebrate it in any way. I can't go anywhere. Um, I still, uh, I, I'm really glad that I put it out, but I've just gone straight into making another record. And a wow. few tracks that I thought were finished, I've just revised and revised and like really picked holes in, in a way that I might not have done. I might have, I don't know, I might have been a little bit delusional and gone, yeah, that's finished. Yeah, that's all right. And I just haven't, I keep sort of thinking, no, I don't not the right word or that that melody's repeated too much you, i'm gonna peel you, it back when you're writing is it like you when you know you know like it's like a painting where you sort of keep adding and there's a moment where you sort of go no that's it is yeah. there kind of like that definitive moment for you there are moments like that <laughs> I, I wish there were a few more because at the moment i'm just going on and on with like feeling um yeah feeling a little bit frustrated with some of the bits and pieces that I have I don't know there's quite yeah. a lot of tracks now and there's certain certain 
parts of it where I, I feel like that's solid. I can't say any more. I can't say any less. I, I think that's it. And that's good, yeah. but there'll be a verse or an outro or something that just seems a bit shit on a Wednesday. And by Friday, I like it again. Um, yeah. And by Monday, I've deleted it. So, <laughs> so um, I'm just doing that over and over. Um, but actually, I think it's serving me quite a good, it's serving me quite well. Because I, I realised the other day, I don't know, I just did a piece of work and I thought, oh, I've kind of, yeah, I've gone through the interface. I've gone into something that I think is actually, dare I say it, like, oh just getting artistic now instead of being like a bit of a phony and I've realized um I've let my what do you mean phony do you mean like this idea like an imposter syndrome sort of thing oh yeah all the time all really? the time really? I think just occasionally in my past I've been a bit lazy with a, a word or a phrase yeah. or I don't know something and it, it really haunts me when I think I shouldn't have let that go I should have mm. worked harder so now I'm getting this opportunity where I just like revising, revising. And um, sometimes, you know, you know, when you've heard something so many times that it no longer, you, you know, it's the same playing. You've played it so many times. It no longer feels like you playing it. You're just, I don't know, hold, you're the infrastructure holding it up. I think yeah. that's the moment when you know. So sometimes if you've played something back for the 400th time and uh, you're no longer thinking about it, you're just holding it, then you, then you can stand back and go, OK, I think that's a song now. So, um, yeah, I just do that every day until sort of, I don't know, Friday afternoon where... I Friday just, is the day. Yeah, <laughs> try, try and think, how, how can this be a little bit different to last Friday and the Friday before the Friday before? <laughs> <laughs> how was Which, it making the last album? Did, did that come quite easily? That was quite... No, I'm not going to lie. That took, uh, that took a while. That was about a, a sort of a year of uh you know fucking about in there <laughs> but we had i mean in in uh yeah i had a whatever it was two-year-old then so it was just really hard yeah. to finish anything um but when it was near completion uh you know we put it we put it to bed quickly when it was like okay these are the songs now it's just yeah. like sing them as well as you can and send them to a mixer um so yeah it was a kind of hurry up and wait feeling and then it all got done i guess well, this time last year, actually, this time last year, it was just after Christmas, and I remember being really pissed off that I hadn't uh, mixed my record before the end of the year. But, yeah, in mm. January last year, it was mixed, and then it was out in August. And, um, yeah, it was some, some songs were played a little bit, and I was really, you know, really glad about that. Yeah. Um, and like now I'm doing in... it all again. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. I mean, do you like to sit in on the mixing and, and the production side of it, or you like, I've done my bit, you do your bit? I used to. I used to really want to be there and have made like ridiculous journeys. And um, you know, I, either they're just in your city and you go and you go and hang out, and that, that's great. But I've, you know, even gone and flown to Montreal to go and sit in the mix of a record, oh, wow. and um, yeah. uh, it, that was that was really good. It was really exciting. But at the same time, I think it sort of dawned on me really that, you know, whoever you choose, you choose for a reason, and that's because they're they're brilliant at what they do. Yeah. They don't really need you sat there going, yeah, I was just wondering, what kind of reverb is that then? <laughs> <laughs> but to you, it's like yeah. a big deal. Yeah, yeah. I th actually, I liked how I mixed the last one. I just sent it, you know, you send it by email and uh, there's yeah. very little communication. Somebody whose work you admire sends it back. And then when it's kind of in a good shape, you can fire yeah. a few little things and feel really... Um, really professional by saying the distant backing vocal is um you know slightly too far panned or something and you feel like nice. yeah I can, <laughs> I can talk this shit <laughs> I like this kind of conversations you're like oh, back in the room <laughs> is it like because we've all been forced to work remotely I mean even this would have been um you know you would have got an invitation to come to London or we would have been in the same room all this kind of stuff um are you do you think you'll carry on working sort of remotely a bit as and when we can go back or you just like I just want to see as many people as possible or I like my yeah, fields uh, and my trees don't want any more people oh <laughs> uh, no I mean I think I was able to uh, make a decision to uh, move uh, out of London because I was able to connect with it so often now that I'm yeah. unable to connect with it yeah I would really like to uh, spend a lot of time with my friends and other musicians who who I miss yeah. Um, so yeah, I do want to get back to it, but I have learned to appreciate, you know, I've got, I've learned to appreciate what I've got so much and that's, yeah. that's great. But, um, but fuck, yeah, I want some, 
you know, I want some good chat. I want some smutty banter. I want my mates. <laughs> <laughs> I, would have liked, girl, I would have liked to come to the studio with you because there's chance afterwards you'd be like, I'm going for a beer or a coffee. Oh, um, the then we'd be mates, you see. Those. Whereas now we'd just be like, oh, it's lovely to speak to you and bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> I love that ritual, like the post studio drinks or the post studio chat or, or like the, the post studio pub, more to the point. Um, it's just. Um, I, yeah, I'm missing, I hear what you mean, I'm missing those kind of rituals, you know, I'm not even going to mention touring, I mean, that's just like a whole world of rituals, oh. but I mean, to, to go in, into a little bit about um, uh, independent venues, like, what what of the role, what has the role of an independent venue, like, meant to you is from the beginning of your career and, and up to now? Oh, I mean, so important, I mean, in terms of e even being um, sort of drawn towards wanting to uh, sing and perform was definitely because I enjoyed going to a little well a couple of little local venues in the town where I uh, was a teenager mm. and uh, you know one of those one of the amazing things about that was that you saw uh, you could fantasize about your own potential yeah um, because it was a venue where sometimes a band you'd heard of on the radio would come through your town and play there. So you, you'd have paid for a ticket and, and it felt oh. important and it felt quite grand. And the two weeks later, your mate's band could be playing on the same stage. And because of that, um, you know, accessibility, there was a place for you to, yeah, you know, to sort of project your dreams or, 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 or imagine your future. Um, yeah. And if everything had been super squeaky clean, uh, bigger, pack people in, you know, designed for its function and designed um, for economy of scale. You'd have just been driving to the edge of town to some like shopping centre area uh, with the, you know, it would have been very plastic and uh, one way in, one way out, same drinks everywhere around the country with no interesting space, no interesting architecture. And I don't know if you'd have had the same um, stream of thought really, but because something sort of local and a little bit run down and uh so, had a commute had a community and perhaps you knew the owner or the promoter or there was just, you know like i say that accessibility it does allow you to dream mm. in a way that i just don't think happens if it's uh, a big corporate space where you're trying to pack, you know you become more anonymous yeah. because it's so much bigger and um awesome. I'm, and of course, like the place I'm picturing now, as I talk to you, did get closed down, and is now a, a set of luxury flats. I think. Oh, I haven't man. been there, but you know, it's uh, just strange, isn't it? Because we were kind of in 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 the midst of that um, sort of uh, crisis in a way already before the pandemic, and the pandemic came this way. You know, um, it's it is really heartbreaking, and I can only hope, even with the, the financial help, you know, it was always under the premise of we can't save everyone we can't save every every business we can't save everyone um and um you know we just kind of hope that uh these venues can survive and you know it, there's, there's a big thing about the will of the, the goodwill of people as well you know crowd funders and all this stuff it's i kind of feel like you know where the government can't help it's it's the music industry that's going to save the music industry you know, yeah and, i mean it has to be and the supporters and, and everything it's uh doesn't feel like we should have to fight for it but we do she said and it, it kind of yeah. I don't know but the, the, the fact that we've all been apart for so long and we haven't done anything celebratory that's intimate and smells yeah. of sweat and feels like a physical release because that hasn't happened you can only yeah. hope that even even those people that perhaps didn't go to shows very often even those people must sense something something missing from their from their life even if it wasn't a weekly event you know and and that when things start up again maybe people will have a fresh appreciation for those those funny little dive bars with a room at the back or you know you just, you just yeah, hope yeah. you just hope that people realize that there is a kind of a poetry in their lives that's missing and even if they don't call that and that they will find it um, in these places, and so they they must go. <laughs> they must go there and buy tickets. And, it's so uh, yeah, you completely yeah. nailed it. I mean, yeah. Do you remember like what was the last small sweaty little kind of stinky gig you went to? Hmm. Or just any gig, <laughs> like the last yeah. thing you did. Do you oh, remember? I really, I really want to know. Actually, I really want to know what the last smelly thing I did was. <laughs> 
another one. That's another one. <laughs> sweaty. Let's think of sweaty. That's like a yeah, blue, yeah. isn't it? Like a sort of <laughs> endless on. soundbite for you here today. Um, <laughs> Sorry. No, it, 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 it was actually a beautiful place, but somewhere that sort of comes to mind was the um, a, a show I did while I was... I, I was doing it. Um, my first solo album, which was a, a very sort of cinematic, slow kind of um, piece of work. And we played a church in Chester called St. Mary's Creative Space, which I, I don't quite know its history, but it was it was uh, a not very well attended church that faced closure and a group of, um, you know, bright people thought they could take it over as a, an arts venue. And... Um, yeah, it was amazing. It was maybe uh, sort of like a little bit um, uh, what's the word? No, sort of nerve wracking. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Nerve wracking yeah. as you sort of step out into something because it's sort of there, there is an aisle and there's sort of, uh, formulaic row of, of seats and everything. But there's just right. this gra- grandeur around you. And yeah. I don't know, like a little bit of a sense of I don't know, a little bit of anarchy in the room, only just palpable, but because it's no longer a, a place of worship in the Christian sense, but actually a place of sort of worship in the sort of uh, sense of humanity, you know, and uh, that was yeah. that was really good. And it was, I, I should point out that it was very clean and it wasn't sweaty and stinky. But, <laughs> okay. it was, but you know, it had a, it, yeah. the tarnish was rubbed off all of it and that was great that was great because it just showed people had been going there for a long time for different uh to you know always to to inspire or or fill the void you know and here yeah. we were doing it with music and uh yeah it really sticks with me as a memory sort of walking out like I'm at church but this is odd and beautiful it's the church of rock and roll <laughs> um thank you so much for joining us it's been um it's been a real pleasure to to chat to you properly and um what just to kind of like finish up a little bit what's you, i mean i was going to say what's next but you've already mentioned that you're working on a new record which is exciting yeah so um i've built it up now haven't i talking about my revisions <laughs> and how, I've got a drum roll uh, on to it. yeah i mean um like i say this second spell of lockdown has really forced me to um I don't know, to just search, really search and um, correct any uh, lyrical or melodic sort of laziness. So I really feel that what, whatever this record will be, and it, it's it's pretty nearly finished if I just fucking get on with it. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm pretty far down the line, you know, I'm sort of contacting mixers and things. So hmm. I'd say oh, wow. I, I, I feel that it will be the product of, um, you know, real... Uh, a real singular kind of focus you know there never before have I been so undistracted um wow so I don't know what that means it doesn't mean it will be better or worse it just means it will be a, a true reflection of um you know that the, the, the searching to, to articulate uh with with a greater effort than ever before I think that's how I'm feeling. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of pleased with myself at last. So once after decades, I'm like, yeah, I'm really focusing, and um, yeah, it feels like a feels like a an opportunity. So I'm, you know, I'm down with it, and it's pissing the rain outside anyway. So what better it to is do? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Ah, oh. do you have a title for it, or is it secret? No, going? I haven't yet. So you, you, you know, feel free to uh, help me with that. I have a working title called the Empathy Files, which. Uh, you know, working titles are always pretty meaningless. But, yeah, uh, they're always great. Though, aren't they? <laughs> bad, but bad I, I think there's a general um, sort of uh, yeah. I'm sort of exploring ideas of uh, empathetic behaviour and uh, organising wow. organising ourselves to bring out empathy in ourselves and other people. Um, I can't just, think of a greater just, thing to a greater message to pass on to the world at this point in time well it's pretty desperately needed isn't it and it would uh it would divert yeah. it would divert so much uh lousy behavior if it was sort of uh at the forefront <laughs> yeah. of, of of what we do what we say um so yeah I, it's, it, it doesn't have any answers so it's just something i'm thinking about it whilst i'm writing so yeah yeah it sounds magnificent and i can't wait to hear it um, it will be it will be <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um 
listen, thank you so much for taking part. And um, I, yeah, we shall speak to you soon. And, See you uh, for beers somewhere See down the line. <laughs> oh, See oh, you God. at a sound check somewhere. Okay, oh, um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, big Cheers. love. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.